Let's pray. Ask God's blessing on our time today. Loving Heavenly Father, we're humbled. We're really in awe of who you are and how you are and how good you are to us. Lord, we need for you to settle and quiet our hearts that we might be able to focus our attention upon you. Lord, please keep any distractions away that would keep us from hearing you and that which you would desire to speak to us today. Lord, we need eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, we are anticipating that you're going to minister to us today by your Holy Spirit, through your word, in a most powerful way. So, Lord, will you speak? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this is the portion of our service that we set aside for Bible prophecy. We like to look at what the Bible says will take place in the last days. We happen to believe that we are living in the last days and that the Lord's return for us his church could come at any time in the event the Bible calls the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ, which if you were here on Thursday night, uh, you learned that the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ has to come before the seven-year tribulation, uh, and we are very uh, dogmatic about that. So there is nothing that has to take place yet prophetically before the rapture, and we believe that we are living in the last moments of world history. We know that because we look at God's prophetic clock, the nation Israel. If you want to know what time it is in Bible prophecy, you have to look no further than Israel to know that we are indeed living in the last days. Now, last week, as I was preparing uh, for the uh, prophecy update, I had planned on talking about the significance of Joe Biden's uh, trip to Israel. I don't know how many of you uh, caught this on the news. Uh, I want to uh, just uh, do something instead because after I saw the Arutz Sheva, uh, which is the Israel National News Publications article and uh, even satire on it, I felt that it sort of summed it up and decided to just let it speak for itself. So here it is. Uh, for those of you who can't read the words, I'm happy to fill in the blanks. Uh, you've got uh, the peace sign behind a cartoon uh, <laughs> depiction of uh, Vice President Joe Biden with the arm sleeve reading Iran, and the words reading, quote, this administration is committed to the security of Israel. Mark my words. If Iran nukes Tel Aviv, they will get an earful of some very harsh words. An earful. Ooh. Uh, you know what? Is Israel does not need the United States to come to her aid when, not if, Iran and this Muslim alliance of nation, nations attacks her because the Lord himself is going to intervene on behalf of the Jews, his chosen people, and he will have the final word. And it doesn't really matter. In fact, I'm convinced, if I could take it a step further, I'm convinced that uh, by God's design, there will be no nation that will stand by the nation Israel so that Israel will have to turn to her God and find her Messiah. So, Suffice it to say that, as far as Israel is concerned, Joe Biden's trip was a joke. Uh, sadly, I concur. Uh, be that as it may, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, something happened last week that sort of tied up a lot of prophetic loose ends for me as it relates to everything that is happening here at home in the U.S. Let me explain. The banking industry the mortgage industry, the auto industry, and now the healthcare industry will soon all be tied together. Uh, all that's needed is some way to track everything and to track everyone. 
enter a forced national ID. Uh, this is back on the table as of just this last week. Uh, I came across an interesting article from an obscure news source called the Canada Free Press. Uh, this was on Thursday, the 11th. Uh, notice the headline, Forced National ID Card Attached to Every American Worker. Get ready for the Know All, See All National ID Card Plus Plus. Here's some excerpts from the article. Obama and his administration want to know and control everything, namely us. If given the chance, Obama and his crew will morph into place a national ID card. Now, the push is on to quickly create a biometric card which would have embedded information, personal information, and fingerprints. This is part of the grander scheme to control all Americans, what we eat, how long we live, where we go, what we do for work, health care, guns, use of gas and energy, and freedom in general. The article goes on to say, Pat Wood of AugustReview.com broke a huge story and wrote a few articles on the reemergence of technocracy and the environmentalists' push and plan for a green e economy using carbon credits. No more cash, no more capitalism as we know it. You would be assigned so many carbon credits as a, a month to use for gas, food, and other needs. Pat also talked about the push now for smart grid technology. This is where chips are put into your house, from washing machines to ovens and phones. The smart grid knows exactly how much energy you use for what and when you use it. Appliance companies are putting readable chips in them so the smart grid can do their thing. Then there is the control with the health care bill. In the Senate and House version still being manipulated into place, they have described the IRS controlling this bill. It would have access to your bank accounts, especially if health payments or bills were late. Did you ever wonder why this health care horror show would be governed by the dreaded IRS? Wonder no more. They have the biggest and most complicated computer system of tracking there is. We yell about the paid for abortions, forced health insurance or else sections, and rationed health care for seniors, but the biggest nightmare is a controlled system that connects and directs traffic of government control hiding behind health. The push for a cashless society, carbon credits, and total control of people, energy, and money, and a forced national ID, then later the mark of the beast, as the Holy Bible describes, will come. And this is not a Christian. It would seem that the nationalization of the United States will fast become the catalyst for the globalization of the entire world. In other words, once everything is under our government's control, we will then be ready to hand it all over to a global control. Now, one might argue that this would never happen, not in the good old U.S. of A. Well. I suggest to you that we may not have any choice because we will be forced to. As I talked about last week, what we're spending as a nation is play money. It doesn't exist. If you were to cash out the entire United States of America, you might come in at about approximately maybe shy of 50 trillion dollars with a T. Did you know what the current rate of spending, the current rate that the government is incurring debt, we will soon and very soon be incapable of serving, servicing just the interest on that debt and we will wake up one morning and realize that we are bankrupt in